Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to season six of my QPR Road to Glory, the final season. As far as I'm concerned, I'm going to win it all this season. We're going to win the Premier League and the Champions League. I don't know about the domestic cups like the FA Cup and um, the Carabao Cup. But look, if we if we can win them as well, fantastic. But this will be the last season, even if I don't win the Champions League or the Premier League. OK, I feel like it's time to put an end to the QPR road to glory. And this is the season where we really finish strong. Now I'm going to be going into a very busy transfer window. I've got big plans. There are players that want to leave. There are players that I want to bring in. And I think there might be a few of your favorites leaving. Honestly, one of the players that's leaving is Giles. I cannot convince him to stay, it seems, uh, which is a real shame. So he will be leaving. Um, who else? I think one of Elliot or Canales is going to leave. I just don't need both of them. I think Irog Banam's probably going to leave. I'm thinking with my central midfield, you know, if Gomez gets injured, I have got a ranking. But let's say we're in a Champions League semi final, Bruno G is suspended, and Angel Gomez is injured. I'm then relying on someone like Maynu, Rankin, Jelovic. What I'm thinking is I, I might need another next level central midfielder um goalkeeper i think it's time to move on from trafford i think 84 is fine respectable but i would like to sell cox and zapata will be leaving as well both of these goalkeepers will leave and we will sign someone there and of course with um giles leaving doig could start but then i was thinking I could really seriously upgrade my left back as well. And then I'd have Briggs and, you know, like an 88 rated plus left back as well. So there's a few positions I've got in mind and I've added a bunch of players to my transfer hub. Uh, two goalkeepers. We've got Mamadashvili. We've got Diogo Costa. Left backs, we've got Davies, Udogi and Theo Hernandez. Um, and then I've still got Yamal in the list, but I'm not so sure we're going to make a move for him. I think he might feature in the next career mode. And then some other players. I'd like to get another backup striker because I think it's time to move on from Saeed as well. And I'm thinking someone like Ferreira could come in and do a really good job. Probably quite cheap. Um, and the last American we signed, Reyna, it went very well. So who knows? Maybe we can do that again. And then I do have some central midfielders, like I said. Kirk Chu, Turam and O'Reilly. Three very good options. And I don't know if they're priority, though. The way I see it is goalkeeper is my number one priority right now and left back. So that is what we're going to sort out first. I do need to make sure I sell players, but also I have got the funds to make a move on a few of these players right now. So um, 144 million. It's a nice amount of money, isn't it? So what I'm going to do is pick a goalkeeper at the moment. They're both basically the same age, but obviously Costa is slightly higher rated. He is going to cost us, let's call it 75 million. Marmadashvili could be 40, maybe. I think it seems like a little bit of a no-brainer to go with Marmadashvili. And it's a great name, isn't it? I think Costa might just be a little bit too expensive. I mean, that's half my budget just gone on a goalkeeper, but he's better. He is a better goalkeeper, so I'm I'm just not sure whether to go all out here and get a top 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 keeper, or do I go for just a top keeper? You know, a really good goalkeeper. I think I think Marmadashvili is good enough. He can play in a Champions League team that can win it for sure. In terms of left backs, I think I'm least likely to go for Udogi, partly because there's a bit of Spurs in there, um, but he's the lowest rated, and I think he's the most expensive as well. Tio Hernandez has 12 months left, well, 11 months left on his contract. We can pick him up for basically his market value. At the age of 30, he is the best left back in the game, if you ask me. And I think him and then Briggs on the right, either wing, I'm good with overlaps. So I think he's going to be my first signing. Tio Hernandez coming to London. Can we pick him up for that 55 million or so? Let's have a look. I'm actually going to be a little bit cheeky here, going with 53 and a half. What do we reckon? I doubt that's going to get accepted. Wait, what? It got accepted? You have to be kidding me. I could have gone in cheaper. 
absolute bargain. But the, the problem is his wage is going to be very high. He's on 165. Okay, that's not too bad. Of course, he wants to be crucial. And don't forget, I could have offered Giles in this deal, but I reckon we'll get more if we just sell the players. Trading players never seems to get you the, the best value. We'll go over a three-year deal. That should be more than enough for a 30-year-old. I can't believe we're going to get him for less than 80 million, let alone less than 55. Wow, he's willing to come down on his wage significantly as well. I'm happy with that. 115k a week and then 1.15 million up front. Oh, he wants a chunk more. Meet me halfway. 125. Right on the borderlands. <laughs> and it's done. Tio Hernandez. Oh my God. I've been wanting to use him for so, so long. And he will go down as probably the best signing we're going to make. And that is exactly why I've got it done first. He comes in our brand new number three. Doig is a great player, don't get me wrong, but he is nothing on Tio Hernandez. We could have... What? I could have saved over £11 million, apparently. I do not agree. There's, there's no way. Surely not. That's ridiculous. So Doig will drop to... I mean, he can play as a centre-back, can't he? I could, I could just do that. And then Tio Hernandez comes in. Look at that. 88, 87, 86, 90. If I get 87 goalkeeper, Marmadashvili, or do I go for Costa now that I've saved a bit on Tio Hernandez? I don't know. Then we're moving into midfield. 87, 88, 87, 86, 85, and then 87. Although Rutter, it says he's content, but he still is transfer listed and I cannot remove him from the transfer list. So I don't know what's going to happen with him. But that has instantly improved the squad. Where do we go next? Should we work out the goalkeeper situation here? They're very, very similar. So 87 diving, 88. The same handling. Marmadashvili is better at kicking, but his reflexes are 86 compared to 93. Speed, he's a lot quicker, but I don't think that matters too much. Positioning, 86 to 85. Genuinely, I don't think Marmadashvili is that much of a downgrade on Costa. Obviously, if you're looking at their overall, yes, he's two ratings higher. But I reckon Marmadashvili being one year younger, who knows, maybe with training, we can get him to 88 within a few weeks slash months. And then there's not much difference at all. He's taller. He's got a better weak foot. Far throw, cross claimer. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get him. All right, I'm going to go in cheaper this time as well. We are going to go with like, you know, 37 and a half million or something like that. And we are getting business done early. I could potentially offer a goalkeeper here. Um, see, Zapata is going to be worth a lot more because his potential is... I think he's an exciting prospect, whereas Harry Cox, it wouldn't surprise me if his potential is like 78 now because I just haven't been using him. So we'll include Harry Cox and then I'll put in 30. Let's see if that's a good starter here. And it's not. They want 43.7 without Cox. Okay. Um, it's a little bit high, isn't it? I reckon we can get the 38 mark. I've learned my lesson in that first signing. I could have gone a little bit cheaper. There you go. Much, much better. I've, I've gone in a little bit lower, but clearly there was even more room to wiggle. Let's negotiate here with his agent. And um, hopefully we can get a good contract offer out as well, because... Diogo Costa was a lot more expensive weekly. Of course, he's a crucial first-team player. Uh, Four-year contract, that's fine. We don't need to go to five. Don't need a release clause. Wage. Um, 120. With no bonus. Done! This is easy! Why do clubs struggle so much in real life to make signings? How easy is this? <laughs> We've signed a new number one. So that means Cox will be leaving 100%. And so will Zapata. 38 million plus the, let's call it 50. Brilliant deals. Absolutely brilliant. We could have got 5 million cheaper. So comparing him to Trafford, better diving, better handling, basically the same kicking, better reflexes, better speed. He's just, he's an upgrade. He is just straight up an upgrade. So those players are done. Next, I would like to get Jesus or Jesus Ferreira. 
I think he'll be a really good third choice striker. Can play as a cam as well. Let's put Marmadashvili in. I love that name, Marmadashvili. It is such a great name. It's such a long name, it doesn't fit on the screen. <laughs> it's going to be massive on his shirt, isn't it? Well, instantly we've improved the squad. And now I think it's time that we get some players moving on because I will run out of money otherwise. How much we got? 39. That's enough to get Ferreira in. Um, that's not where I want to go. I want to go back into my transfer hub. We are going to make an offer for Ferreira right now. I just know he's good. I remember, I think it might have been about two FIFAs ago, I bought him in a stream career mode, and I absolutely love the guy. So um, we're not going to pay his release clause. I'm going to put in an offer of like 20 million or so. That should be enough, I'm hoping. And, oh, I, I could do a player swap here. Let's put in Cox plus 10. I have no idea if that's going to be enough. And if this fails, that's fine. We'll come back in for him when he's got his scout report. Oh, wow. We were very close there. Um, I don't really want the sell-on clause, but it doesn't matter at this point, does it? I'll let him have it and just reduce this to 10.5. I've got a feeling they might accept that. 11. Okay. That's fine. Cox is going to Spain. What a move for him. Let's negotiate his contract. Again, pretty sure it'll be on the low end, and we will sell Saeed, who has been great. He had some good impact sub appearances last season, but he's just not good enough to be in a Champions League winning squad, if you ask me. I might need him to come in and do a really good job for us, and having someone like Ferreira here, just a little bit better. I'm, I'm guessing he's 80 rated, something like that. We don't need a release clause. We're getting him on a three-year deal, sporadic. Uh, 75? Basically what I'm willing to pay, isn't it? And I think that's about right. Nice. Easy. Let's see his rating because I have no idea. Hopefully he's actually gone up a little bit um, compared to what, I, what, I, what I'm expecting. It's season six. I would anticipate he's in the high 70s, low 80s. So Harry Cox plus 11 million. I think that's a good deal. Yeah, it's an A and he's 80 rated. There you go. 88 uh, pace. 79 shooting, 78 passing, 79 dribbling. He's just like a bit of an all-rounder. So I'm super happy with that. And Saeed will go. I mean, the difference between him and Saeed, of course, Saeed's so quick, but he's better at the all-round attacking play. If I put Ferreira at Cam, does he... He gets a plus three. Huge. What a signing that is. I'm well happy with that. Just adds a bit of quality to the reserves slash the bench. If I have any injuries to Jokeres, Rutta, I have someone that's just on another level to Saeed. Okay, a quick update on some of the offers I've been getting. I've accepted an offer from RB Leipzig for Giles, 41.5 million. Very, very good offer. So I've accepted that. I've blocked offers on Jokeres, buying one's dim for almost 60 million. We've just had an offer come in for Koulibaly. Um, a decent offer, to be fair. Samardzic, pretty good player, but no. Uh, and I've had lots of offers come in for Rutter, and this is the biggest one yet. Inter willing to pay over £110 million for him. I've had Chelsea try with a swap deal with money. I've had Everton try it as well. And I've rejected both. I just don't know if I'm going to be able to convince him to stay. And if he doesn't want to be here, he won't have a good morale. He won't be happy. I don't know what to do. I genuinely don't know what to do. Rutter is such a good player and I'd hate to lose him in a way. But like I just said, if he's not happy, then maybe I should let him go. What I could do here is let, let's go into negotiations and let's just see who they've got. Maybe they've got a really good striker. I know they don't have Lotaro Martinez anymore. They've got Raspadori, Colo Moani. I mean, there's no one I'd want there. Or oh, Bastoni. Hello. Baller. Fullbacks, not interested. Uh, wingers. They've got Garnacho. Human Son is 80 rated now. Wow. They've got an aging squad. That is for sure. A couple of midfielders. Oh, Pedri. Woohoo! That would be incredible, but obviously that's not going to happen. Um, <laughs> Charlie Patino. Okay, the only way I'm going to do this is for even more money. That's the way I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with this. If, if he goes, I want 130. How about that? Ooh. 
they're actually considering that. 126 million for Rutter, he ain't worth that. He's good, but he's not that good. He's not he's not a game-changing striker like, you know, some of the strikers I could get for that money. Oh, uh, I don't know what you guys would want me to do here. 126 million. It is an extortionate amount of money for a player that doesn't even want to be here. It's like, it, it's impossible to say no to that. It, it really is. So I need to find another striker and I need to find him quick. I have decided I want someone shorter. I, I don't want another six foot plus striker. I want to go someone zippy, someone that's really good at dribbling and, and passing as well. I, I want like an all rounder up front. And I found one player already. Oh, Xerxes could have been nice. But... um. I think there's only one player that I'm really interested in right now. I looked at Lotaro Martinez. He's at Spurs right now, but I've decided against him because I can't get over this guy. The thought of getting Alvarez right now, I think he's the one I want. Um, and he's cheaper. We, we're, we're getting him for the same price, if not cheaper, than what we're about to get for Rutter. And I would argue... He's better because he's just he's he's literally everything. He's even got 63 defending, which is pretty incredible. Of course, he is a centre forward and a cam as well. He can play behind the striker, but he's five foot seven. He's just something I, I haven't used. I think the last striker I had that was somewhat shorter was Scarlett, and he was brilliant fun. So I'm gonna go for Julian Alvarez as soon as I've secured the funds, and I should have money left over. For a midfielder, I will not be going for Yamal unless something crazy happens at the end of this window or something. I, I, I can't justify that. And Giles is leaving. What a player, by the way. Underrated. If you're looking for a left back at an average cost, look at Giles. Luton left back, very, very good player. Really, really enjoyed using him. And I'm actually, I'm sad. I didn't really want him to go, but. I just couldn't convince him to stay. Apparently, I could have got 55 million, which is absolute nonsense, by the way. There's absolutely no way, and I hate that feature. And can we get a new picture? Why do we have to keep looking at this broken one? <laughs> right, have I got enough money now? Oh, offer coming in for Saeed. It's Sheffield United. I swear they always buy the young strikers. All right, we're going to let him go for that. That's, that's fine. Have I got enough to go in for Alvarez yet? No, <laughs> no chance. We need the Rutter deal to go through. And I'm guessing, yep. Yeah. Oh, I'm getting very mixed feelings about this. Is this a mistake? He's so good. He is so, so good. But I'm excited, like I said, to change it up. Have someone short up front. Someone that's just going to be impossible to tackle. And yeah, he can do everything. And I, I, will, I will miss Rutter. But if I'm looking for someone more physical, guess who I've got on the bench? Jokerez, okay, 126 million for a player that doesn't want to be here. And remember, I requested 130 and they said no. 155, yeah, of course, of course, mate. Yeah, of course, it's a load of rubbish. So now we've got 190 million. It was the right thing to do. It really was. So we're going to go in for Alvarez now. He has got a release clause of 116. They reckon he's worth about 110. So what do I do? We go in with 100. That is my opening offer to Bayer Leverkusen. They are coming down quite cheap. That's nice. Can I be a little bit cheeky? 104 and a half? Kind of meet me halfway? No, they want the 107. 105. <laughs> we can save 2 million. Yes. I mean, honestly, that 2 million could go on a midfielder or whatever. You, you never know. I might actually need that. So now we negotiate with Julian Alvarez. I'm excited about this. He could be so, so good. Our new number nine. I am going to go ahead and offer him crucial. I don't think he'd accept anything less. He's 28 now. We'll go the four year deal. Nice. Don't need a release clause, of course. We're not in Spain. Oh, I'll, I'll offer him what he's on. I think 150. Is he just going to accept that straight away? Kind of. He wants a signing bonus. He wants to go and buy himself a Maserati or whatever. There you go. Take it. Come on. This is insane, guys. What a difference a couple of signings can make to your team. Tio Hernandez at left back, mate. 
Julian Alvarez up front. Oh my lord. He is going to be an absolute superstar. A one season push. And we've signed a World Cup winner at the age of 20. I, I can't remember. He's so small. <laughs> Five foot seven striker. I don't typically do this. I always go for taller strikers. But this is something new. We've made a profit. He wants to be here. And I oh, 85 million. Just ignore it, guys. It's just not, it's just not true, is it? So Jokerez, unfortunately, is still going to be back up. And Alvarez goes up front. We still have 77 million left. That is rather incredible. Let's see if we get any other players sold. Saeed is going. He'll be somewhat missed, but not really. Maybe we'll come up against him. I can't remember if Sheffield United are in the Prem with me, but maybe we'll see him in the Cup. Something like that. Right, we've got a pre-season tournament to select now. It makes sense to go with the most money, but then again, I can kind of pick the teams I'd rather play. Do you know what? I'm going to go with the lowest, okay? The worst group, per se, and see if we actually win a pre-season tournament for once because it never seems to happen. Got a ton of emails to go through here. And by the way, I don't know if you guys have got this as well. Since the update, I'm getting emails like this. It's just a little bit broken. 113 million in the bank from the Rutter sale. Lovely. We've um, finished off one of the uh, objectives. I should probably show you guys. I haven't yet, have I? So youth development is going to be tricky because why would I use the youth academy at this point? But I guess we can try and get them done. Brand exposure, done. Get 10 games with at least one goal scored. Wait, have I showed you these? I feel like I did in the last episode, actually. I, maybe I didn't, though. Um, win the cup, of course. Win the Champions League. Win the title. Win the FA Cup. So we, we do need to do the treble. But the thing is, it doesn't really matter at this point because I'm stopping at the end of this season. So, yes, we will do our absolute best, but I'm not going to stress over the objectives too much. Offer coming in for Zapata, 12.5 million. Apparently, that's on the higher end there. He's a, he's a good keeper. And by the way, look at that goalkeeper kit. And before you go crazy about the Nike tick going upwards, I also questioned that. I asked Daniels, who, again, thank you to him for making the kits and all of the mods for this series. Um, I said, mate, have you seen the, the ticks the wrong way? He went, no, no, that's what, that's what Nike are doing next season, by the way. This is real. Why? <laughs> um, I guess it's different on the shorts and on the shirt. But um, yeah, that, that really threw me off when I saw it. It confused the hell out of me. But anyway, Zapata will be leaving. Another offer coming in for Koulibaly. Just block. I don't know why I'm even entertaining that. No chance we are losing our captain. And then, wow, look at this. A load of offers coming in. Liang blocked. Elliot, I am interested in letting him go. It's him or Canales. And I think I'd rather let Elliot go. Um, we can get up to 39 million. So I'm willing to accept 36.8. That's that's fine. Scherz is going nowhere, though. Elite centre back. I am sad about this one, though. I think I'm more sad about this one than the Rutter one. Because Elliot was a youth academy player and he, kind of special. You know, we scored some absolute beauties with him. That bicycle kick, I will never, ever forget it in. I think it might have been season three. But either way, he is leaving. Everton have signed themselves an absolute gem. Canales is the player that will step in on that right side should I need him to. But um, again, I think that's the right thing to do. Just, just take the money at this point because I need to reinvest it. Zapata is going. He never made an appearance. Another player that I won't miss but will gladly accept the money. 12.5 million for a player that I'm never, ever going to use. He was on loan for two seasons. It was time to let him go. And Cox is gone as well. So we are down to just two goalkeepers. We have no match sharpness whatsoever, of course, but that's fine. We're up against AC Milan. So Tio Hernandez joins QPR and his first game is against his old team. Let's go ahead and quick sim it. Alvarez to score on his debut. Oh, we've lost. But Alvarez did score after nine minutes. Unfortunately, though, Milan have beaten us despite having less stats, less positive stats. Is what it is, isn't it? We beat them when it really mattered. 
if you know what I mean. <laughs> oh, look at that. Another broken email. So Zabata's gone. We've got an offer in for Trafford. Elliot's gone. Um, oh, it looks like I've done. Oh, it doesn't count. Brilliant. I did one of the youth development things, but it doesn't matter. Oh, wait, hang on. Yeah, it's this one. The financial long-term one. Nice. Okay, that's another objective done. But Trafford is going nowhere. I know he's my backup, but he's a good backup to have blocked. So in terms of improving the central midfield area on the bench, this is a player that won't start. I'm looking at all of these options and thinking they're all great. I don't know which one I want to go with. I think Turam, he's probably the best value. 48 million and you're getting yourself an all-rounder. He's good at everything. But I do like the lot. I mean, the look of Kutch, he's, he's so good. I think he's too good, though. He, he should be a starter. So I don't think we go for him. It's between Matt O'Reilly and Turam. Who do I go for? Turam is the better all-rounder. He's got a bit more strength and defense, defensive stats, and he's six foot four. But O'Reilly, I would argue, is more of a number eight, can get forward and play as a cam. And Ooh, this is tough. He's left-footed as well, which I quite like. I think it's a bit more interesting as well. I think I've signed a lot of players like Turam as midfielders. I'm going to go with O'Reilly. I can easily afford him. 68 million. And this might be the last signing. So we're going to get it all done in one episode here. I'm going to offer 50. It's a lot lower than they're expecting, I'm sure. Oh, they're willing to do a swap with Doig. Mm, no. I have got other players I can offer. Um, no wingers. Who else could I offer? Tim Irogbanam is a player that I'm probably looking to move on. Let's do Tim plus... So he's worth, let's call that 20. They're looking for around that 50 million mark. So I'll be nice here. 25 plus Irogbanam. Then they don't have to worry about finding a replacement. Oh, they want 33. The tension's quite high. I've got a load of money. I'm not I'm not too worried about that. We'll just get that deal done. And they will remember me as such an easy negotiator. <laughs> All right, let's get him in the team. He, of course, like I said, will go on the bench as a backup. But you never know. He could be in that Bruno G position before we know it. He's not that lower in terms of his rating, and he offers a lot of what Bruno G offers. And Bruno's going to be 31 soon, so he could start to drop. You never know. We'll try and get him on rotation. He wants important. Oh, it's better than crucial, so we'll go ahead and accept that. Or your deal, we will accept that as well. Who does he play for in real life? Is it Celtic? I think it might be. He doesn't need a release clause. Um, let's go with 100 grand. A little bit less than what he's on now. Done. Guys, this has been one of the easiest transfer windows ever. And it's very helpful that we've just got an insane amount of money and loads of players that have gone that are inflated prices. We've done very well here. And I would argue the squad is better. <laughs> it's actually better off, which is crazy considering the players that I've sold. But I rode Banam and 33 million for O'Reilly. I mean, it's a huge upgrade. And for once... It looks like the game's happy with me. I did a good deal. So although rankings been great, we are stepping it up slightly this season, bringing him in. So we've got Mainu as the more defensive option. O'Reilly is kind of like the number eight and he's left footed. I was lacking a left footed center mid. So ranking drops to the reserves. And I mean, we're looking really strong. We really are. I could potentially get one more player in. I'm thinking we go for a centre-back that can play as a right-back and then drop Mumba to the reserves. So basically, one more player. And I think we're good to go. Then we've got numbers everywhere. I see Jelovic is more of a cam these days. Ranking can play as a cam as well. Yeah, do you know what? Although... NG, he can play as a right back, can't he? I feel like I'm a bit stacked at centre back. Maybe I swap Menji for someone and then get a K. 
Cam in. I don't know. I don't need to do anything. Realistically, the team's good now, so maybe we just wait. Going into the next preseason game here, let's go ahead and make a couple of changes. We'll get O'Reilly in. And don't worry, I'm going to update all of their pictures and their boots and stuff like that in the uh, in between episodes. So we'll do that as soon as I hit stop record. Let's go with Liang. Let's go with Pereira, uh, Ferreira, not Pereira. And let's go with Canales as well. So just rotating the team a little bit there. We'll quick sim win this one 4-0. Oh, 3-0. Okay. Mainu almost got the hat trick. Hassan scored. They didn't have a single shot in that game. Oof. That's kind of rough, isn't it? Up next is Odisha. Odisha. I mean, we can go with the first team here and smash them. Yeah, watch this. 8-0. 5-1. Zarauri, Palmer... Angel Gomez, Hassan, Zarari. Oh, no. Tio's picked up an injury, and he did have to come off at half-time. Hopefully nothing serious, but that is a really resounding victory. Please don't be bad. Please don't be bad. Please don't be bad. Please don't be bad. Three days. <sighs> Thank you. Unfortunately, though, it wasn't enough to win the preseason the pre tournament <laughs> again. I don't seem to ever win them, but um, it doesn't really matter, does it? Uh, an offer coming in for Reyna. Who are they offering? Lamar. God, who remembers? Arsenal fans, remember we were linked with him for 90 million back in the day with Wenger. I'm glad that didn't go through. At the time, I thought, yeah, come on, let's do it. Groundbreaking transfer. A couple of years, well, not a couple, but, you know, now we're signing Declan Rice for 100, 105 million, and we're all thinking that's really good value. It's unbelievable how things change, isn't it? Offer coming in for Doig. Blocked. Don't want to lose him. We are going to play this game against Juventus, so um, let's get cracking. Let's take a look at this Juventus side before we go into the Super Cup final. Vlahovic, Boniface, Vitinha, Rabio still in there? Bacharina? I mean, it's a good team, isn't it? It's a very good team, but guys, look at mine. Ho, 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 it's good. It's real good. I do want to make one change, though. I'm really excited to give O'Reilly a go, so... Bruno G, we know what he's about. We can we can bring him on, maybe. O'Reilly's going to start on that left side. He is going to be limited a little bit because I typically have Gomez going forward. So O'Reilly's going to sit back and do a bit of Bruno G's work, but there's no reason why he can't achieve greatness as a defensive number eight. He'll still get forward. We're going to go with Zarauri, Palmer, Hassan, Julian Alvarez, of course, up front. Hernandez, by the way. It's recommending that I give him the captain's armband instead of Koulibaly. I might do it. It was part of the agreement when he signed. He had to be captain. Should I do that? I think he probably should be. He's, he's the oldest player in the squad in the starting lineup. Um, and Koulibaly's basically being captain because I just I didn't I didn't get a feel for anyone else being captain. But it just feels kind of right, you know. Tio Hernandez, new left back. He's the one who's going to push us to win the tournament, maybe, the, the Champions League. Let's just give him that captain's armband. And um, I'll bring on Reyna at some point. I'm sure Jokerez will come on. Menu. Yeah, I, I am really happy with the squad. I don't know if I need to make any more changes. I will show you guys the new kits in the next episode. We've only got three this time around. But um, yeah, very, very nice indeed. You're getting a look at the home kit with... Um, Really nice pattern on it. And we've gone with the red trim this time around. It looks really nice. So here we go. Vlahovic and Boniface up front. Oof. Yeah, it's going to be a tough one. But do you know what? I feel like I can beat any team. Do you know what, though, guys? I haven't checked the free agents. What if there's an absolute beast in the free agents again? Imagine if I got another player like Briggs, you know? Like an 88-rated baller. Oh, I feel like I shouldn't look. <laughs> I can have a look. Just Oh, no. No, no, no. I've let him through. No. Oh, my God. That is shocking from me. That is totally my fault. But um, I'll, I'll have a look. But I'm not saying I'm going to sign someone, even if they are an absolute baller. I'll leave it down to you guys because I feel like I've made enough signings now that the squad is considerably different. Um, so I, I don't know if I should or if I need to bring anyone in. Here is Hassan, our new number 11 now that Elliot's gone. Palmer's got the number 20 shirt, just like in real life. Angel Gomez. Go on. Oof. What a season he had. I genuinely think he was my best player last season. 
Will he be the same again this season? Who's going to be our best player? It could very easily be Alvarez, couldn't it? He's going to get a lot of goals. Well done. Tio Hernandez getting forward already. There's the overlap from Hassan, who was also incredible last season. Alvarez. Oh, almost getting the shot away. That's not good. Here is the goal scorer. He's run out of play. I'm not enjoying playing against Boniface and Vlahovic right now. You've got two very physical players, unreal finishers, great in the air, great with the ball at their feet. I mean, oh, what a ball. A bit of everything, and I'm having a stinker right now. Can I have the ball, please? This is ridiculous. I feel like a year seven asking the year 11s to give me the ball back. You know, when you kick it over to the year 11s and they keep it from you. <laughs> That's what it feels like right now. I'm getting bullied by Juventus. Oh my God, they're playing so well. That's another goal, isn't it? Oh, oh, I think I might be okay. Good save. First save for Marmadashvili. Is it his first save? Maybe his second save, but he needed to save it. It was going in. Should be fine to get clear. That's a good header as well. Alvarez, nicely won, even though he's five foot seven. Now Palmer, big season for him because technically I could have got Yamal. I had the money for him. I've put my uh, my faith in Palmer. Here's O'Reilly. He's looked pretty good, to be fair. Angel Gomez. Over here to Hassan. Gomez has made a run. It's so average. I don't know if I'm going to be able to win this game. This is more like it. Alvarez. Oh, Zarari. Getting in the way, mate. I think what I've realised already with Alvarez, I'm just so much more confident in playing with him. Like, just passing the ball one twos and stuff like that instead of just hoping he runs in behind all the time it's a very different play style having a five foot seven striker and uh, i'm enjoying it here's tio hernandez cross comes in shouldn't be doing that now should i <laughs> i'm not gonna be complaining about angel gomez getting on the end of them i'm gonna be complaining about julian alvarez getting on the end of them yeah his dribbling's unreal look at that goes around so easily still going Here's Hassan. Very unlucky to get the block there. Is it going to happen? Am I going to get a goal in this game? It doesn't feel like it. I'm having a better second half, though. Thank you. I'll take that. Go, O'Reilly. Go. On his left. Do I try a shot? Oh, I thought about it. That's fine. We still have it. Alvarez again. Let's go over to Briggs. Don't cross it. Don't cross it. Don't cross it. Yes. Palmer. Angel. Ah, oh, come on. This is so much better, guys. Playing much better. Zarari. Pulling it in. Alvarez saved. And that's going to be a goal kick. How long have I got left? 20 minutes. It is time to make some changes. I think I keep Alvarez on for now, actually. Um, Bruno G can come on, though. And I'm also going to put... Oh, this is where I do kind of need Canales on the bench. Hmm, let's have Reyna. Reyna could make a difference here and veil through the middle. So a couple of changes in there. I don't know if it's going to make much of a difference, but like I've said so many times, just having fully fresh players with fresh stamina, maybe they can get involved early. Here's Vale. I want him on his left here. Here we go. Alvarez over the top. Oh, what a ball. Control it. No, 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 just head it. I got caught in two mines. I wasn't sure what to do with that. I should have just smashed it. Vale has come on and made such a difference, though. Great sub. And through. Alvarez! <laughs> on his competitive debut. Finally, we do get the equaliser. 15 minutes to win this and get the first trophy. I could win five trophies this season. <laughs> if I can win this one. It's the first of five potential bits of silverware. Come on. Right. Well, that's happened. Boniface through on goal. I've just missed him. I've just completely ran past him. And there I was thinking, okay, we can win this. And now I'm straight away thinking, great, we've lost this. <laughs> How long have we got now? 10 minutes? Yeah, it's enough. We can get another equaliser. We can take this to penalties. I'm pretty sure it goes straight to pens. That's good play. I see that gap. Oh, he's not going to get there, though. Rabio, he has been brilliant. 
prime age of 33 running this game. Scherz gives it away. Try and get it back again. I mean, Juventus don't deserve to lose this, if I'm being honest. So not much I can say right now. I'm a bit fortunate to be somewhat still in this. That just isn't a foul. Yes, here we go. We've got numbers forwards. Palmer over the top. Finish it. Finish it, please. Rainer of last season would have scored that. I can't believe that's gone wide. Okay, I guess that's it then. We are losing our first competitive game of the season. The season where I need to win everything. It has not gone up, gone off to a good start at all. Oh, hang on. Have I spoke too soon? Armour. Into Vale. Has to be from this. I have to score from this. Bruno G. Over on the left side. Tio Hernandez. Oh my God. Oh my God. I can't keep doing that, that's for sure. What a moment for him. Given the captain's armband, I'm glad I spotted the run. And he's doing what Giles did. What um, what Doig has done for years. Are we straight into pens then? I think it is. No, it's extra time. Well, that means I should definitely bring on Jokerez. What I might do, yeah, do you know what? I want to try Alvarez as, as a cam. So Vale can go out on the right. Alvarez into the cam roll. And Jokerez up front. Damn, this team is exciting, isn't it? Um, and let's put Liang on as well. Just some fresh legs in defense. Well done. Angel Gomez, man. Oh, oh. Rain is in. No. Again, last year's Rainer scores that. Okay, corner comes in. Vale takes it. <laughs> Alvarez ain't going to win it. Angel Gomez blocked. Okay, we're getting close to half time of extra time. Oh, how about that for a ball? It's a bit slow though. Vale had to take his time. Has he got the finish? No way. <laughs> I feel like I should be winning this now and maybe I wouldn't even be... What's the word I'm looking for? Like, I feel like I deserve the win now. I can't think of the word. Who cares? Just focus on getting this ball back, please. Because right now, especially in extra time, rain a big chance. That was a big chance. I probably should be three or four two up. So um, I'd rather it didn't go to penalties because I've got a feeling my penalty winning streak is coming to an end soon. And I'd hate for it to be now. But then again, this is the competition I care about the least. You know, I, d I don't really care that much. Imagine this was a semi-final to get in the final of the FA Cup or something, you know, or if it was a Champions League final, then I would really worry about pens. But to be fair, my winning streak in pens could continue. It really could. So we'll see what happens. Juventus clearly very comfortable just going to penalties. They're not doing anything with the ball here. Passing it around the back. Very boring to play against, but... I rate it. That's fine. We'll go into pens. I've got some very good kick takers. I'm sure they do too. Let's see how it goes. Oh, I can actually pick. This doesn't always come up, you know. Um, so we've got Alvarez. Wait. Oh, I took off Cole Palmer. Although I, I bet Palmer's penalties aren't even that good in the game because I've got an old squad. Um, we'll put Jokerez first, then Alvarez, then Gomez. Bruno and Vale. And then Reyna, number six. And wait, Tio Hernandez is a penalty kick taker, isn't he? What's going on there? All right. I'd say it's pretty even looking at the stats. First penalty, Jokerez, the Swedish striker going top left. And it's saved. Great. Big moment for Marmandashvili. Whoa. What a penalty. I went the right way. I'm going to go there now. Right corner. Saved. Unbelievable. My winning streak is definitely coming to an end. Bottom right. Saved. Yes. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, my. I'm I'm special. Down the middle. Oh, guys. I've absolutely ruined this one. Just send it down the middle. Whatever. Okay. We're still in this, but I have to make the save or he has to miss this. Malero to win it. Top left. 
No, I almost stayed down the middle as well. Well, unfortunately, guys, we have lost a penalty shootout. But like I said, I think this is the, the best time to have that happen. So it is what it is. Fair play to Juventus. They maybe across the whole game deserved it. But that is the end of this episode. Episode one of season six is done. And we'll be back in the next one.